Hello, welcome to this week's agronomy update. I'm Holden Osmus, seed care specialist at the Rake location, and today Jake and I will be covering SDS and white mold. Hey, I'm Jake Larson. I'm going to be talking about white mold this week. White mold is a fungal disease that overwinters in the soil as sclerotia. When sclerotia has a dense canopy cover from the soybeans, moisture, and cool temperatures, it will germinate as apothecia. Apothecia is a small mushroom with a cup-shaped head, and this apothecia produces millions of spores called ascospores, and those are what infect the soybeans with the white mold disease. They'll do this when the soybeans begin to flower at the R1 growth stage. This will happen in late June. As far as identifying white mold, there are multiple ID keys for it. Uh, one is whether or not the apothecia is present in the soil, these small mushrooms. Another is the soybean stems will have water-soaked lesions on each side of the node and eventually those will become bleached and turn a light brown color. If the disease pro progresses enough, the stems will begin to wilt and lodging can occur. Another ID is the sclerotia, which overwinters in the soil, can be seen visible on the soybean plant. It is a hard black fungus that looks similar to mouse droppings. You'll find this on the stem, in the stem, or even in soybean ponds. And lastly, the most common ID trait for white mold is the white cottony mycelium. It can be seen on the soybean plants. As far as management for white mold, uh, once we've gotten to this point in the year and if you're seeing these signs or symptoms, uh, really too late to do anything for control but need to look towards the future. Uh, management practices you can take are um, rotating to non-host crops such as corn, um, but even doing this for three plus years there will st still be sclerotia in the soil, though it will minimize it some. Other things are choosing soybean varieties that are resistant to white mold. Uh, Canopy management is also very important since the sclerotia needs a dense canopy to germinate, germinate from the soil. Uh, keeping that canopy open longer can help. One thing would be planting in 30 inch rows will be better than a 20 or 15 or solid seed bean. As well as reducing populations can help keep that canopy open longer. Other options are fungicides. One thing to note, not all fungicides are labeled for white mold and our timing of the fungicide will be different than our typical application. Normally we're shooting for R3 as our sweet spot, but with white mold we'll move that up to the R1 time frame because that's when the soybeans begin to be infected with the soybean white mold. Uh, most important with management is there's no silver bullet and multiple management practices need to be taken into consideration. Today, later, I'm going to be talking about soybean seed treatments and how those can play into the white mold um, game and how to layer those as our base. So with cold, wet springs like we've had this year, uh, that, that fosters a really good environment for SDS or sudden death syndrome. Uh, usually, that, that disease thrives in the early vegetative stage as the soil temperatures are cooler. Um, it usually comes in through lesions on the roots and from the R1 to R6 stage really is when you'll start to see that SDS come to fruition. Um, if you have SDS in your fields, you might start seeing some yellowing in between the leaflets and the veins would be remaining green. Um, as the disease progresses, those yellow lesions may become brown uh, and eventually killing the leaf altogether. Uh, other ways that you might be able to scout SDS uh, would be checking the root. The woody tissue inside the stem might start browning and kind of looking colorless. Uh, and you, you will also notice brown lesions on the stems as well as the roots rotting away. Um, SDS is a soybean disease that can really rob bushels later on in the season like this. Um, and as far as tips for scouting it, if you believe that you might have hot pockets for soybean cyst nematodes, that would be a great place to start checking. 
um, as well as cold areas, wet areas in the field. Um, once this season, uh, once this point in the season has has come, with SDS, there's really nothing that you can do on a foliar level to manage it. So everything, as far as SDS management, would be things like selecting the soybean varieties that are strongly resistant to SDS um, and using seed treatments as well. Um, so to talk about seed treatments, going into 2020, there's products that you can use for SDS. Uh, Olivo has been out on the market for several years now, uh, now owned by BASF. Uh, that, is a, that is a product that when treated, it's not a silver bullet. It's not going to make your seed entirely resistant to SDS, but it might increase that soybean SDS tolerance rating a point or two uh, just to help it really battle that SDS. Um, in 2020, Syngenta is launching a product called Saltro, which has the same active ingredient as Miravis Neo, the foliar fungicide that was released this year. Again, it's the same thing. You're going to, it'll help as far as the SDS tolerance, a point or two, uh, but really it won't, it won't cover and completely make your plant resistant to SDS. In 2020, we're gonna have a AFS seed treatment package called AFS Protect. In AFS Protect, we're gonna have three different fungicide in there, covering all four of the faint, four main soil diseases. It'll also be an inoculant. And lastly, we're using a biological to help for white mold. The biological that we'll be using is a non-living plant-derived biological, and it's unique in that it uses a unique mode of action, and that is called systemic acquired resistance. How the SAR mode of action works is different than other modes of action we'll use to target white mold. We're not targeting the sclerotia and trying to reduce its population or trying to target ascospores that are going to infect the soybean with white mold. But the systemic acquired resistance, this biological focuses on the plant. All soybeans have natural uh, tolerances and defenses to diseases such as white mold. And what this biological does is help to increase those natural tolerances and defenses that the soybeans have towards the white mold. So as far as the, it, with the next level of our soybean seed treatments, uh, we ran a pilot this year for a product called AFS Select, uh, which is a green treatment this year, as I have here in this vial. Uh, essentially, to, to take the next step above from AFS Protect, what AFS Select brings to the table, it brings the inoculant and it brings fungicide protection. It also brings in insecticide or insect protection through Cruiser Max. Um, and then on top of that, to help that plant really have a healthy start to, to help boost the systemic acquired resistance from our biological treatment, there's also some plant growth regulators in the AFS Select package. It's going to be having your cytokinins, your gibberellic acids, and your isobutic acids or your IBAs. And what those acids do is they help the plants get out, they help the soybeans emerge from the from your soil faster and more evenly. So that helps the plant invest more time into establishing a strong root structure to really get itself to be a tough plant to help those resistance levels. As far as SDS, uh, this biological product that we have does have a, it, it does have a label for SDS, uh, like Jake and I have been talking about in this update. It, there are no silver bullets. Uh, if you know that you have a pretty heavy soybean cyst nematode pressure or SDS in history on that field, you might want to consider adding a nematicide or even one of the SDS products I talked about earlier, like Saltro or Olivo. Um, so thank you for watching this agronomy update. If you have any questions on what we've covered in this video, don't hesitate to reach out to Jake or I in the rake office or Trevor in Esterville as well as Eric Haberman and Eric Winters in Okabina and Falda. Just get in touch with your agronomists and uh, we'll be able to help you out. Thanks again.